A while back, I made a video on how to filter items in list views, but I had one viewer comment, how can we highlight the filter text or the search text? So basically, they want to type info into the text box, and whenever that word that they type into the text box occurs within any of the items in the list view, they want it to be highlighted. So in this UI workshop, what we are going to do is create a custom control that is going to support that use case. We're also going to be building off a lot of the concepts I go over in my custom control series, so be sure to check that out if you're interested, but we're also going to be going over those concepts briefly throughout this video. So let's begin by checking out our demo. So my main window is a highlight text block demo window. Let's check that out. So that just has a text box where the user will enter some kind of search term. And then we have an items control, which is kind of similar to a list view, but a little bit more generic. So our items control is going to have a stack panel of text blocks. And I set up the item source for this items control in my code behind. So just a few phrases that will be displayed in those text blocks. So what we want to create is something where I could type into this search box, such as cat, and what it would do is highlight cat so it's easier to find what you're searching for. So let's create the custom control that's going to do that highlighting for us. So I'm going to put this in its own project. Just in case I want to publish any of these custom controls as NuGet packages if other people want to use them, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. But we are going to create a new project, and what we're going to do is a custom control library. And I'm on .NET 5, maybe .NET Core, so I'm not going to select the .NET Framework one. So let's select that, and I'm going to name this Highlight Text Block Control, and create that. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with explaining how this project template works, the custom control project template. But basically, we have a custom control right here, and we override the metadata for the default style key property. And what that will do is automatically apply the style that we have in themes, generic.xaml right here, and that includes the template for our custom control, which we will implement in a little bit. But right off the bat, I'm going to rename this to highlight text block and make sure that we update that everywhere, including on this style, so highlight text block, and on this target type. And then make sure the class gets updated too. And we're just going to get rid of this gigantic comment right here. And now we have our control ready. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is set up some dependency properties. So I'm going to use this prop DP snippet. Should be built in the Visual Studio, I hope. And this is going to be the highlight text property. It's going to be a string. And the owner class is simply just this highlight text block. And the default value will just be string.empty. So the highlight text is just going to be the text that the user is attempting to highlight. So it's going to be, in our case, the text that gets typed into our search box. And we're going to try to find that highlight text within the text box text. So we're also going to have a dependency property for just the regular text, which will also be a string and the inner class, the highlight text block again, and we'll have string.empty as the default value as well. Now, instead of registering our own text property, instead, what we can do is just use the text block text property and add an owner, which is going to be our highlight text block. And this is going to allow us to just extend that dependency property instead of creating our own because, you know, this dependency property could have some advanced metadata on it. So we want to just reuse that. And again, the owner type is the highlight text block. And that should be all the dependency properties we need right now. So you might be wondering why we redefine this dependency property. When instead, you know, we could just inherit from text block. But the reason we don't want to inherit from text block is because there actually is not a template property on text block. So we couldn't set up our own control template. And that's an issue for us because we're going to be directly altering the text box display by adding highlighting. So we're just going to inherit from control and continue with these dependency properties. So speaking of our custom template, Let's go ahead and implement this. So this is going to be very simple. We're just going to have a text block in here, and we're simply just going to give this text block a name, and we're going to call it part text display. And this is just a common naming convention for template parts. And it's also helpful to document these parts. So if we come into our highlight text block, above our class, we can have a template part, and the name of that part 
is something that we're going to put into a field down here because we're also going to need that part name within our control. We're going to use it later. So that'll be a private const string. We'll call it text display part name and just put that name in here. Use that in our little documentation up here. And then the type of that part is a text block. So we will use type of text block. So there we go. And that's good to document in case someone wants to provide their own control template, they'll know what parts they need. So the reason we're creating this part is because I want to actually grab this text block, get it into my custom control, and directly edit its properties. So what we're going to do is have a field up here for our text block, and we'll call it display text block. And then let's get that text block when our template gets applied. So what we're going to do is override on apply template, and we will use template.findName. And the element we're looking for is named text display part name, since we got it in that field. And the parent is simply this control. And we will assign whatever we find to our display text block. And to do that, we're going to have to cast the element to a text block. So let's go ahead and do that. So as a text block. And now we have our display text block. We can do whatever we want to it. So right off the bat, what I want to do is update the highlight display. So this is going to be a method. And what we're going to do inside of this method is find all occurrences of the highlight text within the text box text and highlight that text. So I want to quickly go over the concept behind how we're going to do this. So if I go into my demo window, I'm going to mess with this text block right here. And what we're going to do is open this up and we can directly define the text box content within the text block if we open it up like this. And a text block can contain these things called runs. And each run can contain portions of text. So we can have like hello. And then we could have multiple runs. And this one can say world. So we got hello world. But then a run can also have a background. So if we set a background to yellow, then it's going to appear as hello is not highlighted and world is highlighted. So let's look at that. There we go. We get this highlighting effect. So we're going to take advantage of these runs in our custom control to do our highlighting. And we will set that all up in this method. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that our display text block is not null. Because if for some reason someone overrode the default template and we couldn't find our text block part, then this will be null and we will get exceptions and everyone will be mad at us. So before I get into the complex stuff, I want to show how we can add runs to our text block. So instead of setting text, we're going to use inlines. And with an inline, we can add an item here. And this item can be a new run. So we'll have our first run. We'll just have hello. And then we'll do another run, except this run is going to be highlighted. So I'm going to put all of that highlighting logic into its own method. So we'll call this create highlighted run. And we'll give it the text we want to highlight, so world. And let's generate that method. And we'll return a new run pass it our text and then we'll also initialize its style so we're gonna have to set up a new style let's do that up here and the style is gonna take care of the highlighting so the target type is gonna be the type of run for our style and the style we're gonna add a setter so a new setter and the dependency property we want to set is run dot background property and the value is gonna be I think this needs to be a brush. So we're going to do brush dot, or I think we do brushes. There we go. We get all of the brush options. So we're just going to do yellow, just the default highlighting. And then we'll just apply this style. Oh, and this method needs to return the run. So let's actually start using this control. So instead of our text block, we're going to have a highlight text block. And before we can use that, we're going to have to add a project reference to our custom control library. There we go. And now if I control dot on this, I can add that namespace. We rename this something shorter. We'll just call it custom. And that's all good. So we're going to need a binding for our highlight text. And for this, we're going to bind to our text box text up here. So text and the element name that we're binding to is TV search. So the text property of this text box. And we're not actually using any of this highlight text yet or even this text, but let's just make sure our inlines are working and our custom template is working too. So let's run this. I'll put a breakpoint here real quick. 
All right, so we hit the breakpoint. Let's just continue. And there we go. So we get our highlighted run. Now all we have to actually do is implement the highlighting on whatever our text property is using the highlight text. So let's get rid of this. And let's begin by first taking those inlines that's going to contain the runs and just starting off by clearing them. We want to have fresh inlines, just empty, and we can add what we need. So first, we're going to get the length of the highlight text. We're going to need that for our calculations. And right off the bat, we can just check if the highlight text length is zero, then we're going to set the text of our display text block to whatever our controls text is. So we're not going to do any highlighting because there's nothing to highlight. Actually, I spelled this wrong. Let me fix that length but otherwise let's do the highlighting so for this highlighting what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan the text and once we find the part of the word that matches our highlight text we're gonna add all of the previous part of the word into our display text block inlines just as regular text and then we're gonna add the highlight text into our inlines but it's gonna be highlighted text and then we're gonna continue to scan the word after the last highlight text until we find the highlight text again, do the same thing, add all the previous text, then add the highlight text, then continue scanning. And once we reach the end of the word, then we're just going to add all the rest of the word to our inlines. So hopefully I added some kind of visualization as I described that. But if I didn't, hopefully the code will make more sense as we implement it. So we'll start off with a for loop and we're going to iterate through the entire length of our text. So let's start off with just some checks here. So if the current iteration of going through the text plus the length of the highlight text is greater than the text length, this means that there's no way that the rest of the text could contain our highlight text because the highlight text is too long and would overrun the length of our text. So if that is the case, then what we're gonna do is add all the remaining text to our inline and we'll have a new run and it'll contain the text starting at i all the way to the end. And then we can also break out of the for loop as well. But if we get past that, that means the text could contain our highlight text. So we're gonna search for that. So we'll have next highlight text index, and we'll use text.index of, and that'll find the index of our highlight text. And we're gonna start from whatever index we're at in our iteration of the text. But if that equals negative one, then that means that the rest of our text does not contain our highlight text. So we can just do the same thing we did here where we add the rest of the text to our inlines and we can break. But if we get past that, that means that the highlight text is somewhere in our text and it's indexed by this variable next highlight text index. So what we're gonna do is add all the previous text to our inlines. So we're gonna add a new run and that'll be text.substring starting at i all the way to the next highlight text. So we'll do next highlight text index minus i, and then we'll add the highlight text. So for that, we're gonna use create highlighted run for our highlight text. So that'll apply the highlighted background, and then we're gonna update i to skip over the highlighted text that we just added. So i will now equal next highlight text index plus the length of our highlight text, and we'll do a minus one because the i is gonna get incremented automatically in our for loop. So looking at this, this is a little bit complicated and hopefully I added visuals to this to make it easier to understand. And I also know there's a bunch more algorithms out there, but I really didn't wanna get into any kind of advanced algorithm for this. Just wanted to keep it somewhat simple and hopefully that is sufficient. But feel free to optimize this as you wish. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Let's go ahead and test this out. All right, let's type in cat and nothing happens, and why is that? So let me put a breakpoint here, and let's debug this. So if I type in here, ooh, it doesn't look like anything's firing, so why is that? So if we look at our custom control, what's happening is our highlight text is changing as we type into that search box. But when the highlight text changes, we're not re-executing this method. So therefore, the new highlighting isn't gonna get applied. So what we need to do in our property metadata is we can have a property changed callback. So I'll call this one highlight text property change and let's generate that method and I'll go ahead and move that down here outside of our dependency properties. There we go. 
And we're also going to want to raise this callback when our text property changes as well. So let's grab all of this metadata, including the default value, and apply that to our add owner method for our text property. There we go, now we got that metadata. So whenever our highlight text or our text changes, we want to call update highlight display. But as you can see, this is a static method. So how the heck are we gonna call this instance method? Well, the dependency object that gets passed into this method is an instance of our highlight text block. So what we can do is if the dependency object D is a highlight text block, we'll put it into a variable highlight text block. And then since we have that instance, we can call our update highlight display method on the highlight text block. So now let's put a breakpoint here and see this in action. And we should actually get the highlighting to work as well. So now I'll type in cat again. Whoops, and we hit our breakpoint. That's good. Let's put a breakpoint in there. So now we're going to be calling update highlight display as our text or highlight text changes. And now, as you can see, cat is beginning to get highlighted. Let's keep on typing. And there we go. But as we type cat with two T's, no longer highlighted, backspace, and now it's highlighted. And this will also work for search text in a word more than once. So if we type in O, as you can see, all the O's are highlighted. So we have successfully created our highlight text block. So just a little bonus feature. I think one thing that would be cool is if you could configure this highlight style that we apply to our highlighted runs. So maybe you'd want the background to be something like blue, or you'd want a foreground of white with that, any kind of customization. So to allow that configuration, what we can do is have a dependency property, and we'll call this the highlight run style property, and the type of this property is gonna be a style. Owner class is our highlight text block. Let's create a method that'll create this default value, so we'll call this create default highlight run style and then let's just grab this style right here we can cut that out and while we're down here for our style for our run we're going to use the value of our dependency property so the highlight run style and then paste our old default style into here return that from our method all right so the default style is working that's good but if i come into my demo window and i open this highlight text block up and we set a value for the highlight run style. Let's put a style in here. Target type will be a run. We can style this however we want. So let's have a background. Let's do like aqua. It's a good highlight color. And then let's do a foreground too. We'll do coral. Oh, this is gonna look good. Let's see this. All right, here we go. Oh, that looks nice. All right, so there we go. We got our highlight text block. So we can highlight whatever phrase we're searching for within our text. We also have some additional configuration for highlight styling. So hopefully this demo was helpful. We got some examples of dependency properties, custom control templates, template parts, property changed callbacks, and some fun, somewhat complicated logic of finding words within text. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this published as a NuGet package, if you're interested in using this. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.